Welcome back students, this is the professor and in today's episode of creating our online banking website we will be handling the backend data which comes from the user. So this will allow the user to create its own bank account and withdraw and deposit money and all that fun stuff. So let's get right into it. So in this video we won't be doing anything to the main.py file so we'll create another python file and I'm going to be calling it functions. So I'm going to say functions.py. There we go and let's open the file and in this file we're going to be using something called object oriented programming so if you don't know what that is just drop a comment below and i'll make a video about it so we need to create a parent class and a child class so i'm just going to type it in right here so parent class and we'll also need a child class so in the parent class we're going to be creating a class called users and in the child class we'll be creating a class called bank so the child class will actually inherit all the information methods and properties from the parent class which just makes the code much easier to understand and debug so i'm going to say class user user brackets as that is the syntax and i'm going to initialize a function so i'm going to say def init and open brackets and I'll, inside the brackets i'll type in self and with the self i'll also type in name so what the self and name is going to do is it's going to assign the property to the objects that's created by this class so i'm going to say self dot name equals name and this would be much more clearer when we actually test the block of code so you can actually understand what's going on behind the scenes and after we've initialized and set our properties we need to create a method and this method is going to be called show details, which allows the user to check if that the account is there. So it's going to check the name and the account balance. So I'm going to say def show details, open the brackets, and inside the brackets, I'm just going to use self, which will grab a hold of all the properties inside the initialize function. And inside the show details function, I'm just going to say x equals personal details. And the reason I'm going to assign variables to each of the sentences is because I want to make them into a list. And this is going to be much more clearer when I actually implement it into the website. So I'm going to say show details, personal details, and I'm also going to say y equals name. And with the name, I'm just going to put in the semicolon and I'm going to say plus self dot name. So the list will actually show the string name and is going to associate it with the name that we created which belongs to the object. And I'm also going to say z equals, I'm just going to write that down below. So z equals account balance is now and I'm going to use the pound sign. You can use the currency of your choice and for my bank it's going to use the great british pounds. And I'm also going to say string and self dot balance now i created the self dot balance to show the user the amount of money it has in his bank account so i'm going to make a list and the name of the variable will be a result and it's going to hold the information of x y and z and this function or method will return the list result so that's it for the parent class let's get right into the child class now we're going to create a class called bank use the brackets and we're going to, since we're going to inherit the methods and properties from the class user inside the brackets i'm going to type in user and this just inherits everything from the parent class and i'm going to initialize the function so i'm going to say def init brackets and i'm going to use self and name which is inside the parent class and I'm going to use a function called super now this function super is actually really useful as we don't have to type in self.name equals name over and over again or if your properties has a long list you can just shorten it down to a super function so i'm going to say super underscore init underscore underscore and i'm going to inherit the name and i'm also going to say self dot balance equals zero just going to correct that so it's B L A N C E. So there we go, that's it for the initialize function, and now we go into the methods. 
So the next method we're going to create is the deposit function because the user needs to be able to deposit the money they want into their bank account. So I'm going to say def deposit, open the brackets and inside the brackets I'll type in south and I'm also going to type in amount. Now you see we haven't written amount anywhere else is because the user is going to type in the amount they want to deposit into their bank account. So this amount or the argument right here will depend on the user themselves. Let's see the colon and self dot amount equals int amount. So I'm just going to validate their input and I'm going to make it an integer. Now I'm also going to say self dot balance. Going to correct that equals self dot balance plus the self dot amount the user has written down so what this is going to do is it's actually going to update the self dot balance which is zero with the amount the user has inputted into their bank account so now that we've got that done we just need to say our return we have to return account balance is now so this is just a string account balance is now and we're going to add the string i'm going to make it a string self dot balance just like so so now that we handle the initialize and deposit function the user also needs to be able to withdraw the amount of money that they want to withdraw from the bank account so i'm going to define another function called define withdraw just like that with some brackets and it's the arguments is going to be self as well as amount like this add the colon and i'm going to say self dot amount equals int amount it's the same as what we did earlier for the deposit function so now we're going to implement an if or else statement so i'm going to say if self dot amount is greater than the self dot balance then we need to return insufficient funds and I'll explain what this code does in a bit so insufficient funds and I'm going to return the pound sign since that's the currency my bank uses and I'm going to add the string self dot balance so self dot balance now what happens if the amount which the user wants to withdraw is greater than the amount you have in the bank? We don't want that to happen. So we're just going to return the insufficient funds string. Now, if the user has enough funds in their account and they just want to withdraw the amount which is lower than their balance, we then say else and we say self dot balance equals self dot balance minus the self dot amount just like that and we'll also return let me get rid of that amount and we'll return account balance is now use the great british pound sign and i will say plus the string self dot amount just like that so if they have enough funds in their accounts they can actually grab or withdraw the amount they want and now that's it for the withdraw function we're now going to implement a method which allows the user to view the balance of the account so i'm going to say def view balance just like that and I'll, the arguments will be self and i'm going to return show or self dot show details which is the function we have created earlier right over here so now we are actually going to test if our block of code is correct so i'm going to create an object called prof and i'm going to say bank use the brackets and if i hover over the bank function it said that i need a name argument so i'm just going to name it as prof and now i'm going to print prof and i'm going to use the function show details and if I run this block of code, you can see that it says 
personal details and the name is professor and my account balance is zero now let's say I want to deposit some money into my account so I'm just going to say print I'm going to use my object's name and I'm going to say deposit and I'll deposit a thousand pounds so I'm going to run this once more time and as you can see before the account balance is zero and now it's updated to a thousand pounds so to check that again I'll just copy this statement right here and I'll paste it over here give this a run one more time and now you can see that it actually updated the money inside my account to a thousand pounds now what happens if I want to withdraw some money out of my account so I'll just say print use the object's name which is prof and I will say what's the name of the function so it's withdraw so I'll withdraw all over there over here so I'll say withdraw and I'll withdraw a hundred pounds and I'll actually print this function again which is show details and we'll give this a run one more time and as you can see from a thousand pounds we withdrew a hundred pounds and now it's nine hundred pounds so there you go guys, I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and if you did don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.